Hey everyone, it's Kalen from Kite, the AI-powered coding assistant. And today we're going to use Python to build an AI that can play the popular mobile game 2048. I like this game because it's simple yet challenging, and if you're anything like me, you'll find it harder to beat the game yourself than it is to build an AI to do it for you. To build an AI to beat 2048, we'll be using an approach called Monte Carlo Tree Search. Stick around to see how this is done and how well our AI does at 2048. Before we get started, we should do a little refresh of the rules of the game. 2048 is a strategy game of combining like values in a 4x4 grid, all of which are powers of 2, and we do this until we reach the value of 2048. The game begins with just two randomly placed tiles, and for each move we slide all the tiles either up, down, left, or right. When the like values collide, they collapse into a single tile showing the sum of their values. After each move, a new tile is introduced to the 4x4 grid. The challenge is to reach 2048 before exhausting all of the slots in the 4x4 grid, and with no legal moves remaining. For a more detailed explanation of the rules, check out our video that explains how to build 2048 from scratch using Python. The link is in the description below. Alright, first let's look at how the model works. We're going to use a Monte Carlo search tree to help us beat 2048. To understand this approach, let's think of the game as a decision tree. The root node is the starting position of the game, and the leaf nodes are the ending positions, classified as wins or losses. We want to find a path from the root node starting position to a winning leaf node and do it as fast as possible. This is a difficult task. Not only does it take hundreds of moves to win the game, but we are playing with imperfect information because new values will be added to the board at random each turn. To determine our move, we will evaluate a random selection of paths of our decision tree. This is where Monte Carlo comes in. Monte Carlo is a class of methods that model an event by generating a great number of simulations of that event and then randomly sampling outcomes from these simulations. So an example will help here. We can use the Monte Carlo method to estimate the value of pi. To do this, we generate 100 or 1000 or a million points within a unit circle. The more points we use, the closer we'll approximate pi. And for each of these points, we calculate its distance to the origin, and when that distance is less than 1, we color the point red, otherwise we color it blue. Now we take the ratio of the red points to the blue ones, and we'll notice that this value will be pretty close to 3.14. So hopefully that helps you understand how Monte Carlo methods work. The Monte Carlo approach we'll be using for creating an AI that plays 2048 is to generate a great number of games that end when either A, the game ends with a win or a loss, or B, some move limit is reached. We'll call each of these games outcomes a path. We then score each of these paths based on the sum of the values of all the tiles that were merged during the gameplay. The paths are then grouped by their first move, and the first move with the best average score of its paths is selected. We are splitting our search paths by first move, so we will define a list holding the function for each first move as well as a list for its respective score. This next portion of the code handles playing the first move. We'll loop over an index for each possible move and then try and play that move. Playing that function will return in the following order, and the board after the move was played, whether or not the move was actually playable, and the score from that move. If the move was played, then we will add a new tile in an empty square and add the score to the total scores we are tracking. If the move wasn't played, then we'll continue on to the next first move. Now let's look at the rest of the moves to be played in the search tree. From the position after the first move has been played, we are making a number of searches per move. We set the move number to 1 since only the first move has been played. We will also make a copy of our board after the first move and set a boolean variable is valid to true. We are defining a while loop which keeps looping while the game is still valid and the move number is less than the search length. At each move, a random move out of the available moves is made. The random move function has three return values. They are the board with the move played, whether or not the position given to the function is valid, and the score for the move. If the game is valid then, the new tiles will be added. The score from that move will be added to the first move score's counter, and the move number will be incremented by one. Then this just repeats until either the game becomes invalid, meaning there are no more playable moves, or we have reached the search length. The last step is outside of all the loops, which just defines an index of the move with the best score. Then that move and its validity is returned. 
If all the moves are invalid, then game valid will be false, and the given position wasn't valid in the first place. That's it. This bot should be able to play 2048 better than most humans now. But before we take a look at the results, I want to talk a little bit about Kite, the AI autocomplete we've been using in this video. Whether you're new to Python or already a pro, you should try out Kite as your autocomplete to reduce your keystrokes and save time programming. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. So if you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. Great, let's look at how we did in the game. We're testing our AI using 20 searches per move and a search length of 10 moves. The AI is displaying its moves on the board and the moves are printed in the terminal. If you've played 2048, you probably noticed the AI violates a lot of common human strategies to beat the game. For example, the tile with the largest value stays in the center of the board rather than in a corner. Even though our AI doesn't conform to human strategy, it's still successful and can be nearly guaranteed to win the game if the searches per move and search length are increased. Now let's speed up this video to see how it performs. Score, our AI managed to beat the game on the first try. So we've known for years that AIs are better than humans at playing chess. And today we prove that AIs are also beasts at playing 2048. So feel free to tinkle around with the code from this video today. There's a link in our description to the GitHub repo and leave comments to let us know what you think. For more gaming with Python, subscribe to our channel now and ring that bell. We love bringing you fun and useful content that helps you code smarter and we'll have more videos coming each week. Finally, don't forget, Kite's AI Autocomplete helps you code faster and smarter. It's free to use and the link is in the description below. Happy gaming.